you could have the best gun in the world and the best technique in the world, but if you're flinching, it neuters the impact of that gun and of that training. I've seen dramatic results. And uh, like Mike was saying, the worse the flinch, the more dramatic the change is. <clears throat> there was a lady I was working with in New Jersey who was literally shooting the dirt in front of the target at seven yards. And she was very emotional about shooting. So I did it 20 cycles and then she was shooting the bottom of the target. So I did another 20 cycles and she was six inches low. And I did another cycle and she was actually hitting the bullseye. First time she'd ever done that. So she was hitting a one inch dot on the target at seven yards. I've done this on dozens of shooters now and seen some very dramatic results. It really does work. Flinch is an impulsive response that overwhelms logic. And because of that, logical solutions to it a lot of times just don't work. Desensitization is another one where people are told, just go get 500 rounds and shoot until you don't flinch anymore. That can work, but it's mean, it's slow, it's costly, and it's inefficient. Focusing on trigger control, that's great, it's important, it's a different problem, it's not flinch. Proper grip and milking, also a problem, but it's a different problem, it's not flinch. Your brain is about 2% of your body, but it uses 20 to 25% of your daily oxygen and glucose. It's really important that we get enough of that up to the front of our brain so that it can fight off our amygdala and let us do things logically like pressing the trigger straight to the rear rather than flinching. Uh, a lot of them do come from professional sports and Olympic coaches and uh, applying them to firearms training for uh, the average person so that we can, we can enjoy some of the same benefits that, uh, that elite athletes are. For most people, things are going to be shockingly bright and things both up close and far away are normally clearer. A lot of times clear enough that you can read menus and your phone uh, without glasses if you normally need to wear readers. Adam stands for amygdala deactivating eye movement. So what you're going to do is point down at a 45 degree angle. The brain rewards importance with speed and this is the fastest reflex in the body. I did that twice while I was walking down the airport, while I was walking in the airport, and it took me from having to slow down considerably and limping to being able to walk up full speed with no indication that I had any discomfort at all. I'll pick something in the distance and do eyes closed aiming and see if I'm dead on to the right or to the left, and I fix it by the body doesn't work well with pure oxygen. It, it needs carbon dioxide in order to take advantage of oxygen. Carbon dioxide stimulates the chemoreceptors in the cerebellum, which improve balance, improves error correction, it improves midbrain function, and to be quite frank, bad things happen when CO2 levels are low. Falling is the number two cause of accidental death in the world, and the, number, the second fear that we're born with is loud noises reducing the pressure wave uh, to the forehead can be all that it takes to take somebody from having flinch to not having flinch. Looming is one of our primal fears and recoil can trigger that response. All of those we can think of as going into a stress bucket and if the level gets high enough it's going to trigger flinch. The easier it is to keep balance, the less of a threat balance is and the less likely we are to flinch when we shoot. We've got Flinch being caused by the amygdala, hijacking logic, hijacking what the front of our brain wants to do, which is just press the trigger straight to the rear. Even if we know how, the amygdala can hijack it and take it over. So what we want to do is feed the front of the brain and starve the amygdala. The power of, of vision and balance and stress modulation and its impact on performance in all areas of life is pretty darn cool.